Welcome to the Our City Church Podcast. Whether it's your first time listening or you're a weekly listener, we hope this message impacts your life, your relationship with God, and your relationship with others. Here's Pastor Chris. I want to welcome again everyone who's here today for the first time or everyone watching online. Thank you for joining us here today. We're glad to have you uh, with us. If you have a Bible, I want to invite you to open it to Luke chapter 15. We're going to be looking uh, into this story. We started looking into a little bit last week. Uh, I want to say hi to my grandma, Pop, uh, Uncle Don, Aunt Reggie, and uh, my cousin Robbie, who's planting a church in Alabama and uh, East Bay Christian Center. Uh, Cousin Rob, I love you. We believe in you and we're praying for you out there. So a little shout out to the cousin. My, pa- my, my cousin's a pastor. So there you go. Everybody say hey online. There we go. Um, <clears throat> we are, this is the final week of us talking about the one. Uh, the one it comes from this story that we've been walking through. And if this is your first time hearing anything about this message series, I'll just quickly let you know. We've been talking about a story that has to do with us kind of learning um, about the heart of God towards us when we wander. Like, how does God feel about you when you are making mistakes? How does God feel about you when you mess up time or time again? How does God, what is God's heart towards you? Now, a lot of us grew up maybe in homes where parents were like over, like uh, disciplinary. You know, like they, it wasn't just like, you know, you didn't just quote, get in trouble. Trouble got into you. You know what I'm saying? The the, the belt's name was trouble. You understand? And so, you know, like it was like, man, there was some harsh, like there wasn't correction. There was, you know, it was, it was harsh. Or you might be, maybe kind of had a church experience where you just felt like God's out to get you when you make a mistake, you know, and, and some of you still live with some of that. You, you live with this constant state of like, you know, like, you know, you've messed up, you're kind of living foul or, you know, making crazy things, you know, said or done. And you just kind of feel like, oh, you know, like when it gets cloudy, you, you think you need a sidestep lightning because God's there. And so what we've been doing is walking through how God, how do you look at me when I make mistakes, when I wander? Well, God, uh, you know, Jesus comes down. He tells this story to a group of people who had kept a lot of people out of church, the synagogue in its day. And they were like, hey, these people make these mistakes. So these people can't come around the church. Okay. They can't be around the things of God. And then Jesus comes in and goes, mm, actually, you're wrong on that. Let me tell you who can. And then he talks to this and he tells a story. Hey, if there was a shepherd to a bunch of people who were shepherds and knew shepherds and relied on shepherds to care for some of their flock. And he says, hey, it, if, uh, for instance, if you was a shepherd, you had a hundred sheep and one wandered away, wouldn't you leave the 99 and go make sure that the one was taken care of and bring them back? Yeah, of course you would. So then we started to learn that Jesus is talking about the heart of God, that when you wander, he's a good shepherd that wants to go get you and bring you back. So you're not eaten up by the wolves. Right. And so that's part of the, 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 the idea of a good shepherd. And then we introduced the idea uh, throughout the series of like, OK, well, how do we deal with that idea that God says, OK, go out and get your one. So we put up prayer walls over this whole series and you put names on name tags. And we've been praying for folks and we've been planning to invite them to next week's five year birthday service. Five years. And that's next week. Right. And we've been praying for these folks. Say, God, would you change their life? That's been what we've been doing. Now, how do you juxtapose that with fancy words and how do you do that with I guess not fancy to you I got I got some established people in this room my bad I'll try to raise the the the, the elevation of my loquaciousness for y'all man apparently you know my lexicon's not good enough for you not impressed today are we okay fine man didn't know I had such literary students in the room today Ain't nobody even, you're not even responding to my fancy words. Not impressed, they said. It's fine. That's fine. You know what? You're not wrong. See, that's a pastor's wife over there, man. She got pastor. That's Pastor Mike's wife. She's like, that's because none of them understood. Don't mess with Tyranny, man. She a street fighter. You don't, you don't want to try. Don't, 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 don't come for I've been her pastor 20 something years. She's like, I'll fight people for Pastor Chris. You better watch out. You think you're afraid of Mike. Nah, Mike's afraid of tyranny. <laughs> so <laughs> that's true. So, you know, so then Jesus tells us the other story and he goes, hey, there was a father. He had a, he had a couple sons. The, the younger son comes and says, bump your rules. I want out. 
And he says, give me my inheritance. Super disrespectful. He leaves. He loses it all. Living crazy, living lavishly. And just all of a sudden, he's eating with the pigs, the detestable animal to the Jewish people. And Jesus is telling this story. We talked about it last week. And we got halfway through this story. And the place that we got to this story was, what is God's heart towards those who wander and to, towards those who prodigal? Because a prodigal is not a wanderer. A prodigal is like, I'm out. I'm gone. You can't get to me. Like, you're not going to get to me. I'm gone. I don't want to be a part of you. I don't want you to be a part of me. I'm out, right? That's a prodigal. What do we do with that? Well, God seems to tell a story that suggests that father was like, all right, man, like the door is always open and you can always come home, but go on. If you got to do it, go do it, man. I love you. It breaks my heart. I don't want this for you, but if this is what you must do, I've got I've to let you go on with it. But he didn't turn his heart to get ugly. So we learned that all of a sudden the son decides, this is crazy. I'm sleeping with pigs. I'm eating pig slop. Man, you know what? This, the guys who work for my dad got it better than me. So I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to go back and tell my dad, like, I, don't call me son. Don't call me your boy. I don't want to be your, you know, like, I don't want to be your child. But can I just go work in the barn? Can I work in the fields? Can I just go be like your hired folks? Just, you know, I don't have no air rights. I messed that up already. And God in this story, teaches us through scripture, through Jesus' teaching of this story that, you know, the heart of, God, of the father was that he, when he looked up and saw on the hillside the silhouette of his son, he didn't say, well, nah, man, you must, you got me mixed up. You need to go on, go on back to the pigs then. Try to come home for Thanksgiving. No. Yeah, no, 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 don't, right? Like he, no, he ran to his son, right? But now we're gonna talk today about how do we, those that are supposed to be a part of the 99, how do we act when the wanderer gets back, right? How do we, the son who stayed home and kept honoring the father's wishes, how do we act when the prodigal brother comes home, the prodigal daughter, the prodigal sister, the prodigal father, the prodigal, whoever the messed up one in your family is or in your life, when they come down and they're coming back, what is God's heart for you, what does he want and expect of us who have been, not perfect, listen, not perfect. You make mistakes, you sin, but you, you and you're coming to church, okay? Like you ain't just like a, you know, you're not like Easter Christmas church folk, right? You're like, nah, I'm gonna be there. You know, not every Sunday, right? But I'm gonna be there. Like God is going to be a big part of my life. I'm not gonna mess around with like how important I know God needs to be for me because I know what my life will become if I get disconnected from him. So I stay in God's house. I stay rooted in God's house. I stay watered in God's house because I want to grow in God's house so I could have the house of my own house the way God's house wants me to have. So I got to stay grounded. I got to stay rooted. I got to stay watered. I got to stay connected. I got to stay in community. I'm not messing around with that because I know what happens when I do, right? Those of you that are in that place, that's the 99. That's the son who stayed home, who probably ain't too cool with his younger brother and his ways. And now we're going to zoom in and say, okay, now God, what do you want from us as a church community? What are we doing? What's going on this week and then going to happen next week? What's happening in your life and in your house? And how does God want us to see? These two things are converging and I want to look into it. We're going to start in verse 21. Luke chapter 15, it says this, the son said to him, this is the prodigal son coming back. And he's, by the way, where this is happening is up on the, on the hillside because the father has run out to the son, okay? Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. So the wanderer comes back, right? Obviously he has guilt and shame. He's probably got his speech memorized. And you can imagine what he's expecting, right? He's expecting what you're expecting. That like you should not expect anything from God. Why would God want to love you, want to bless you, want to be happy for you, want to help you? He don't want to do that. You reap what you sow, don't you? Don't you reap what you sow? Ain't that in the Bible? Well, you about to, you, you about to find out. <laughs> don't. Don't do that. Verse 22, but the father said to his servants, oh, man. This is what I love. Because watch what the father says. Now the father is going to show you how the 99 and how he, the son is supposed to act towards the brother and the sister and the people who come back to God. He says this instead. He calls to his servant, quick, bring the best robe. If that ain't God, don't answer it. You already know. <laughs> you know that's my favorite joke, right? <laughs> Listen, if you're new around here and you're young and cool and you start to think that joke's old, I want you to know I don't care. 
I'll tell that joke till I'm 75. I'll be up here, man, coming up all with like, you know, whatever I got to do. Not that 75 means that. You understand? That might be me. I played too much golf or I, you know, risked too many things and now I'm jacked up. That was, that was not me projecting your 75. That was my 75, just to be clear. But I want you to know if you're young and cool, if you ever have your phone in this church go off, I will till the day I'm done preaching, make that joke. If it ain't Jesus, don't answer it. And I will love it. And I don't care if you ever laugh because I don't make that joke for you. I make that joke because I like it. <laughs> go get the best robe and put it on my son. Put a ring on his finger and go get sandals for his feet. Why? Because his feet are beat up. And he ain't, he ain't been able to walk with something protecting his feet in a long time. You hear the care? Do you hear that? I know every mom's paying attention to that. You hear that? Just when you see that your kid's shoelaces ain't even tied, you into it, right? You see they feet all jacked up, you know, or the socks are all, you know, no, 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 come on, come on, come on, come on, right? Just like that. But now we hear like the father out there like, hey, 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 nah, this ain't gonna work. These feet are all messed up. Just can we just clean up his feet, right? Put that robe over the top of my boy. Hey, go into my, hey, go inside my bedroom and go inside that closet. There's a box inside there. Inside that box, a smaller box. Open that up. Get that ring. That ring? Get that ring and bring that ring on out here and put that ring on my son. Not only that, verse 23, bring the fattened calf and kill it. Let's have a feast and celebrate. For this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost. Now he's found. So they began to celebrate. That's what it's all about, church. That's what it's all about. It's all about the lost being found and then us celebrating that that takes place. That's the heart of the father towards you and towards us and towards them. It's towards you and you're the wanderer and you're the prodigal. And it's towards us when we're the one that stayed home and we're working with the father's heart. That should be our heart is having an open heart to when they do return back. Now they don't, they shouldn't come back and just be all, you know what? Uh, you know, yeah, maybe I'm not perfect, but um, now that I'm back, I expect to have my room and you know what? No, 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 no. And I'm not going to do no chores and I need a little bit of money. And no, nah, that ain't a prodigal coming home. That's somebody who done messed it all up and wants you to keep giving them a free meal ticket to keep messing it up. That ain't it, church. So don't hear God's word and start, you know, messing around and making someone's life worse because you can't put the boundary down. The boundary sounded like last week's sermon where he said, go on with it then. But you, ain't, you know, this is as much money as I can help you with and it ain't going to happen again. Okay, so help them to a point and then put the point down and say, that's it. No, I'm not doing it no more. This is what I will do. This is what I will not do. Do you hear that? That's healthy boundaries. That's all right. You ain't supposed to be the endless ATM to someone's addiction. You're not supposed to be the endless ATM to someone else's mess. You're supposed to eventually go, I can't keep spending all this money on that. I can't keep bailing you out. I can't. But when you want to help yourself, I'm here. I will be the first one in line to welcome you in. I'll throw a party when you're ready and we'll get to it. You want to you want to go to rehab? Man, I'm here to help with that. OK, I got money for rehab. I don't have money for your drugs. I got money to help you move out of that terrible home with that terrible. I can help you with that, but I don't have money to help you, you know, work it so you can stay in brokenness. I'm not, I will, I can't help with that. Okay. I'll listen. I'll pick up the phone. I'm so sorry. I'm here to pray with you, but no, there's gotta be a point where I do say I've done all I can do. And now someone bigger than me with more money than me, like, I don't know, God is going to have to help you. See, that's what it is. So this son of mine was dead. He was lost and now he's found. So then you celebrate. You understand the celebration ought to be when we realize they're alive and we, that's, yes, thank God they're alive, right? Some of y'all know what that's like. And then they're not lost. They found. That means they found their way back home, but that means they come to the rules of the home, not the rules of what they want your home to change, to become, so they can just have a hideaway place to keep acting like they want to act. You want to act like you want to act, go get your own home. Go pay your own bills. Go do your own thing. But you're going to come in this house. You got to do this house rules. 
That's the way it is. And that's, that's fine. That's healthy. That's called maturity. That's called adult. That's what grownups who are healthy think like. And that might be new for some of y'all thinking like, man, that sounds harsh. It doesn't sound harsh if you're an adult. When you're a mature adult, that just sounds like, well, yeah. Well, yeah. The same way if I work for a couple weeks, I expect to get a paycheck. That's just like, uh, yeah. Like to some of you, you think like, I can't believe you would be so harsh that way. It's like, wait, 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 that's adult. Adult world is those types of healthy boundaries. Just the same way, are, are any of you shocked when you go to work for a couple of weeks and you get paid? No, you're like, uh, uh, yeah, that's kind of how it works in the adult grown up land that we're all living in. It only doesn't work in little kid land. In little kid land, yeah, all kinds of crazy rules are about. But when you get adult land, it's like, no, no, no. And that's what we see happening here. So we've got this idea. Now he comes home. Now, here we go. Let's get into it. Verse 25. Meanwhile, I love when you hear like, meanwhile. Although, however, you'll never believe what this person was doing. Meanwhile, in other news, the older son, everybody say older. The older son was in the field. And when he came near the house, he heard music and dancing. Now, do you get the picture? Where was he? Tell me again. I don't hear all y'all. Y'all, well, I know you heard me, so let's, inter let's interact, okay? I'm not up here talking by myself. You, this is a participation sport here at Art City Church, all right? So you can go ahead and start, you know, yapping back at me. Where was he? He's in the field, right? Now, you ever been out in the field? You ever been out there trying to, like, work, do your thing, working hard? Wait, ready? Let me just talk real quick to whoever's the primary, like, um, income maker at the house, Okay, and maybe you both do it. So God bless you both. And you could both feel what this is like. But you ever been the one working and you call your significant other and they and they just chilling. <laughs> chilling. I mean, chilling. I don't want to say what your definition of chilling is, but whatever your definition of chilling is and you working, boy, you working. And they're like, oh. And then, wait, 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 wait. They can't even stop talking to all the people around them to talk to you and you breaking from work just to try to talk to them. You're like, wait, wait, I got real work waiting for me right now. I'm pausing real work to call you back. I'm calling you back, not working. And you can't tell fun friends no for a second to talk to me when I told work friends no. We, hey man, we gonna have, we need a marriage counselor. Somebody, anybody, is there a doctor in the house? See what happened. <laughs> you ever been? Oh, I, I can help you out, Sandy. You ever been, you ever? <laughs> Sam, we do both sides, Sam. Don't, don't, worry, don't you worry about it. Sandy, Sandy, have you ever, I'm gonna talk about someone I might know, someone I don't know. You ever been delivering babies? And you FaceTime your husband and he's just by the smoker in the backyard cooking up meat. And you just like, what? I'm working here. That was not for everybody. That was for a few people in the church. That joke, that right there. Okay. Are we all trucking now? This son's out there working. Not only is that, he's been working. You know what he's been doing? He's been working hard all the time, consistently every day while his foolish little brother is out there spending the family's money. You made us cash out some of dad's 401k. You must have sell off some shares. We had to sell that house to give your craziness some money. And I'm here working, trying to make it all work. And now you, you know, I come out the field off the work and what do I hear? We, we talking plans about how we gonna go, you, we gonna go to, <laughs> we gonna go to Chili's and we gonna go have some food for the brother. I just figured I should use chilies to make sure, you know, <laughs> chilies kind of safe. They got something for everybody. The older son is part of the 99. Indeed and work only. But he's not part of the shepherd's heart. He's not part of the father's heart. He's just in the shepherd's pen being obedient for himself. But he don't have the heart of the shepherd. He don't have the heart of the father because he's mad at all this hype and hubbub and all this excitement we're giving to the fool brother who I had to hold down. You know what happens when somebody quits, but you don't get no more money for the work? 
you doing double work for the same money. You like how that goes? Everybody, anybody ever had a brother, sister, or a co-worker not carry their weight? And you feel like you ain't even lifting your side of the couch. I'm dragging this thing around. You laying on the couch and I'm carrying it. That's what this, this brother has a reason we could all appreciate. We could all understand why he would be annoyed. And I don't really think it's that bad that he is annoyed. And I want to differentiate between feeling annoyed and acting out of alignment with the heart of God. You can be frustrated with your younger brother, with the prodigal who done spent the money and you work hard. That's a legitimate reason to be annoyed. That's all right. Period. What you going to do now, though? Because now this is where Christianity comes in. This is where Jesus comes in. This is where the world's way of thinking and the secular mindset that says, I feel this and I'm annoyed, so I get to act how I feel. Man, skip your feelings. If you're a follower of Jesus, your feelings don't mean nothing. You think Jesus felt like dying on the cross for your ugly sins? He didn't. He didn't feel like doing none of it. In the Garden of Gethsemane, famously, he says, Father, if there's any other way for me to save mankind, but get my tail whooped open, be denied by all my best friends, and be tortured and crucified, I'd like that plan. Can we do plan B, not plan me, getting whooped up like this and killed? You think the feelings Jesus had were energized because of the pain? No, he endured the cross. He went to the cross. He submitted to the cross. And we are living in a day and age, we don't know how to submit our feelings anymore. We have worshiped emotion. In the last five years, emotion is God. Oh, if you feel it, it must be over. You go on with it if you feel it. Who cares? If you don't feel like it or if you do feel like it, your feelings cannot be trusted to make quality and wise decisions. Your feelings can be foolish. And it's okay if you feel them. Feelings are just feelings, though. They're not decision makers. They need to be submitted to wisdom. If it's wise, do it. But if it's foolish and you feel it, then you need to process your feelings and get them to wisdom. That's something the prodigal son's brother, older brother, he didn't know how to do. So he probably came in, heard all that dancing, heard all that racket, you know, and is annoyed. And then when he gets in, though, man, he shows himself and he violates the heart of God. Listen to me. This is the differentiating. Listen, this right here is the differentiating factor between the way the world handles disappointment, annoyance, and the way Jesus commands us, leads us, tells us, mandates that we do it. You don't get to just feel when you follow Jesus. You get to feel it. You do get to feel it, but you get to submit those feelings to him and say, okay, filter these feelings until they become like you. You know what it's like to filter water? You know what it's like to filter out something? I got to filter this stuff out so I could get the purity of what I'm filtering the impurities away. He says, bring all your feelings. Some of them are godly. Some of them are not. They're like you. But I want you to submit those feelings unto the filter of Jesus and let him filter all the foul, dirty, annoying, overly annoying, retaliatory, prideful, arrogant. No, fine. If you, if I don't get to, you don't get to. All that ugly stuff. He goes, nah, filter it. You can feel it, but just because you feel it, that don't mean it's what you're supposed to do. No, not, not, no, that ain't it. And we see it all right here. So the older brother, verse 26, so he called one of the servants and he asked him, hey, what? <laughs> like Marvin, what's going, like what's going on? Verse 27, your brother has come, he replied, and your father has killed the fattened calf because he has him back safe and sound. I kind of wonder which servant was the one who answered the story in the story. You know, was he one that like he was homies with the older brother or was he homies with the younger brother or was he homies with the father? We don't know. It's just a story Jesus tells. But in my mind, I can't help myself. It's, it's the way I read the Bible. I just look into stuff. I go, huh, I wonder, I just wonder what that was, would have been like. Who was he rolling with? So the older brother became, what's the scripture say? Angry. He got angry. He was annoyed. Then he heard, and now 
he's angry. I'm angry because you're not doing what I think you ought to be doing. See, once you get to that place, you're no good in those moments to help God's kingdom work because your boundaries can't be trusted to be healthy boundaries because they're retaliatory boundaries. You're just getting even. You're not actually having boundaries. You're like, oh, fine, fine, fine then. You know what? I'll tell you, I'm not coming. I'm not going in. I don't care. Fine, have the party without me. Do you hear it? I know you hear it when other people do that. Do you hear it when you do it? Because I just said, do you hear it? And a lot of you are like, oh, I hear it. I heard it this last week. My mom, my, my, my bro, right? It's easy to hear. Listen to me. It's easy to hear it in everyone else except. You can't hear it in yourself. It's impossible to hear yourself. This is why we need scripture. This is why at our city church, we go into the scripture. Why? Because the scripture is the perfect filter to the, to the humanity that lives within all of our sinfulness. And we listen to it, we go, oh man. And it shines the light and it flashes a light on that dark little part of your little heart where you pretend to the world that you don't ever act like that. And then you gotta sit there and go, dang man, yeah, that's messed up, huh? Well, all right, I'm a little more like the older brother than I thought. Fine. Oh, 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 oh that's what's up? Oh, okay, fine. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah, no. Go have your time. We'll see about this, right? And we have this like, I'm gonna get even with you. And that's what we see is in the heart of this brother. And he comes to him, to the celebration. I'm not going to the celebration. I don't wanna hear it. I don't wanna know, I don't, that, that, no, that's not for me. So, no. Can I tell you right now, that will fracture a community of believers. The moment it stops being just about you and you decide to say, I'm not coming. I don't really like this sermon series. What are they? We're just sitting here talking about people who have wandered. I've been in church 30 years. I don't really understand why I got to sit in there. Huh. Hmm. Oh, so every sermon has to be perfectly tailored just for you. But you want to be in a community of all of God's people. What do you think? God made everyone like you? So where in your mind do you make space for the fact that some of these sermons got to be about people not like you? And where in your mind do you set precedence for the fact that the father says, hey, 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 I need you to help me set the party up for the one who wandered back on in. I need you to help me go get the one that wandered. You can't just be chilling all the time and enjoying it and making it about you. It's not just about you. And this right here is where we get a chance to illuminate a part of our heart that says, yeah, man, that's in there. I do get a little you know, I don't know, this is not really, you know, uh, this part of the, this part of the, this part. And when you are a God, like a Christ-centered community of believers, this kind of stuff shouldn't be. It ought not be of a church like that. We ought to hear that and go, it's in there. I'm not saying it, listen, I'm not saying it ought not be because you're not human. You can go be some superhuman that doesn't feel that stuff. No, no, no. You're going to feel all that broken, messed up stuff, but you submit it. That's what you do. You submit it and you bring it to the cross of Jesus and go, all my pride and all my, uh, and all this, mm, uh, uh, and you, it's all in there like it's in this son, like the older brother. It's in you and it's in me. But what Jesus is teaching is like, no, I don't want it to be the, pre, the, 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 the thing that you predicate your emotions and your reactions to. React based on what happens after you filter it through my heart. Once you filter it through my heart, ask yourself, do I sound like the way Jesus wants me to sound? Do I, am I getting ready to act the way the father would act? Is this his heart or is this my heart? And I just hope he forgives me and gives me grace for acting out of line with him. If you are part of the 99, guess what? You don't get the option to choose how you gonna act. Not if you've said, Jesus, I bow my knee to you. You're the savior. You're the Lord, I'm following you. If you just want fire insurance, and you just said, Jesus, save me because I don't want a bad life. But you don't ever want to bow your knee. Man, I would question whether or not you would ever seriously made Jesus Lord. Because he's not just Savior. Saviors, get rid of all the bad stuff in my life. I want a Savior. Great. What about Lord? Do you want Lord or you just want Savior? You just want grace and forgiveness and mercy for all the wrong? But then he goes, okay, I'm Lord too. Yeah, I don't want Lord. I just want the Savior guy. Can I just have the Savior forgive me of my sins every time I feel bad so I can kind of get rid of all those negative guilt feelings? But I don't actually ever want to like do anything you tell me to do. I want to do everything I want to do, feel what I want to feel, act what I want to act based on those feelings and never filter it through you. And then I want you to just say that's Christianity. No, it doesn't work like that. 
No, the son, who's the older brother, has to come in and go, man, oh, I feel this towards my brother. But then he has to submit it. He has to bring it before God and go, you have a different heart than I do right now. You do, and I don't know why you do. And I'm allowed to not even know why. It's a little annoying. Having said that, you have saved me. You have provided for me. You have loved me. You have forgiven me. And I will bring myself to it. I'll submit. And I won't get retaliatory. I won't, mm, I'm not pulling back because I don't like that. I'm not getting my way right now. Like, I'm not doing that. That's what the prodigal son's older brother does. Oh, oh, that's what's up. Then I'm not going in. No, because no, that's why. Because, because that, yeah, no. Bye-bye. And this is what the father says. But I'm sorry, this was son. But he answers, Father, look, all these years I've been slaving for you and never disobeyed your orders. Sounds like those of you who've been in church a long time. Faithful, you tithe, you give, right? Church ought to be a little more my speed, right? Isn't church for me? I'm the one building it around here, right? I'm the one giving. I give the kingdom. I'm the one, right? Hey, well, hey, don't forget me. I'm the one that's been around. I've been the one in the field. I'm the one building this thing. Look, Father. All these years I've been slaving for you and never disobeyed your orders, yet you never gave me even a young goat so I could celebrate with my friends. Do, do you, I hope you can hear it in your own heart right now. I really do. I hope you hear it in your heart because it's in there because you're a human. And this is part of what happens is we start making our faith about our feelings instead of filtering it and going, ooh, shoot. I may not be the wanderer anymore, but I am the older son. How did that happen? How did I go from knowing what it was like to be lost and trapped and being hunted by the wolves of my mistakes to really kind of securing my life through a better belief system and I've made Jesus my savior and then it was great and it was amazing and it was awesome and it was wonderful and then years into it, all of a sudden I went from being the wanderer and knowing what it's like to be saved and being so full of joy and forgiveness and mercy and just overwhelmed at his love. And oh my gosh, this is so great for me. I'm so happy. And then before I knew it, I looked in the mirror and I turned into the older son and I'm annoyed at anyone else getting that treatment because what about me? I've been here. You never gave me a young goat so I could celebrate my friends. And then he, I mean, this, I mean, now he's just like, let me double down. I'm already out here. But when this son of yours, just real quick, just to have a little fun, uh, any mom and dad ever see behavior in the child and you say, um, today you want to hear what your daughter did? Uh, yeah, I got a phone call from today about, about your son. It's like, wait, wait, we made, we, that's our son, okay? Uh, no, no. When I tell you what he did, you'll know this is your son, okay? My son didn't stand up on the table and pee during recess. Your son did, okay? That's your child, not my child. My child, my child did extra credit homework, okay? It's your child that... But when this son of yours who has squandered your property with prostitutes comes home, you kill the fatted calf for him? What would God say to this? What is his heart? Jesus makes it clear. My son, the father said, you are always with me and everything I have is yours. You're always with me. Everything I have is yours. Did you hear it? Do you want to know what the father really wants you to want? He doesn't want you to want the property and the money and the inheritance. He wants you to want the fact that you get to be the one that is close and with him. That's what he wants you to want. He don't want you to want the things. He don't want you to want the stuff. He don't want you to want the materialism. He don't want you to want all the different things that measure up in the status symbols of what everyone else has. He doesn't want you to want all that byproduct of God. He wants you to want him. To want him, to know him, to desire connection. He says, you are always with me. That's top of the mountain, son. To be with me. This is what I'm about. 
You think I ran up to that hill because I was happy he spent all the money? No, I'm happy that he wants to be with me again. That's the heart of God. The heart of God is, yes, I know about your mistakes. Yes, I know you wandered. Yes, I know you spent it. Yes, I know you're a fool, but I just want your heart to want to be with me. And when I know your heart wants me, desires me, longs for me, wants to connect to me, build my kingdom, do my things, then that is what pleases the heart of God. The other stuff is the byproduct of a heart that loves him. That's the nature of Christ following. All the other stuff is religion. It's you doing things. But he says, it's not the things I'm chasing. It's your heart, longing, desiring connection with my heart. You are always with me. And then the byproduct, did you hear it? Put the verse back up. You are always with me. And the byproduct of that is, look, man, everything I have is yours. What you scrapping and fighting in your heart because sister got a little more in the inheritance than you. Oh, so-and-so got praise in the meeting and you know you did a little more than what? Oh, well, it's not fair because we did this for your parents, but now we're not gonna do it for mine. And all this ugliness gets in there and it's natural and it's normal and it happens and you're not bad when it does, but as Christ followers, it's our job to submit that stuff and go, what's most important here? It's most important, God, that I want to be with you. And then all those things I'm fighting, scrapping for, and that's, I need to get my heart to the place where that stuff again becomes, man, that's the byproduct. That's secondary. It's a blessing and I want them, but it ain't my priority. My priority has to cease to be, God, give me all these things. There's a verse in scripture where Jesus said, seek first my kingdom and the righteousness of me. And all these things will be added to you. Seek me first. I want you to love me, want me, desire me, come to me. Not as a genie that you just like, okay, God, I'm coming to church and I gave a little bit in the offering and I'm okay, I'm, I'll do this thing. But genie God better come out and I got three wishes and I need them to happen. And that's what I want. And he's like, look, I get it. And guess what? That's an appropriate response when you're a toddler. And I'm not shaming you. Some of you have been in church so long, but you're still a toddler in your faith. You still have a, I just want, I want, can I have a toy? Can I, mommy, daddy, mommy, God, God, I just want genie wishes. Come on, God, 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 God. And God's like, hey, I love you where you're at, but how long do you want to stay a toddler? Do you want to grow up? Because I want you to grow up. But that means you have to start making changes. That means you have to submit your heart to God and go, ooh, there's some ugliness in there. I need to submit that. I need you to filter that. I want to purify that. And that means I have to let the stinging feeling of rubbing alcohol, of a cleansing agent, like hydrogen peroxide on an open, dirty wound, and it stings, but it cleans. It gets the job done. The cross is painful and awful and, and hard, but it does its job well. It kills and he says, get on the cross, take up your cross and follow me. It's an effective way to kill the flesh inside of you. It's an effective way for you to die to yourself. It's an effective way for you to get rid of that selfishness is to come to the cross and say, filter it out of me, get rid of it within me. I don't wanna live like me. I wanna live like you. But we had to celebrate, son, and be glad because this brother of yours was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. You hear what the father says? You remember when you said he was just my son? I just want to remind you, he is your brother. So don't you disconnect. Don't you try to, mm, no, that, that's not my heart, okay? That's not my heart. He back, and he's submitting, and he was humble. And he said, I've sinned against heaven and against earth. Do you hear the humility? That, when we hear humility, we better spring into action and celebrate what God is doing. So how do, how do we do this? Well, we intentionally left some time today. We, you might have noticed if you got here on time, which I know is a sometimes rarity at our city church. You know service starts at 9. I don't know if you knew that. Some of you, I think some of you think you can get in the parking lot at 9. We'd actually like you to get into the church at nine. And if you have kids, back that up a little bit. Can you help me with that? I mean, what's that mean? I don't know. I don't know. Like, I don't know. How's that work a little bit? Maybe 845? I don't know. I'm getting crazy here. Getting crazy. I know. I know. (laughs) 
but we, we, we saved some time. How are we going to do this? Well, I want us to prepare to celebrate the prodigals that are coming next Sunday. Because I'm expecting that God's like heard our prayers. And he, I don't know if it's your name that's on that board, but I know there's names on that board that are coming next Sunday. And we're a part of the 99 and we're the son that stayed home and we've been working in the fields. You know what that means? It's time to get and come on in and be ready for next week. Okay, next week's our fifth birthday. We got an eight o'clock, a 10 o'clock and a 12 o'clock service. Okay, we asked everybody to RSVP so we know who's coming, when and where. First thing you could do is RSVP so we know who's coming, when and where. Since like 12 of you have done it so far. Remember when I said it's okay to be annoyed? Yeah. Also okay for me to be annoyed. I'm like, hey, sheep, RSVP, so we know who's coming to the services. Love you. You're so dear to my heart. Love my, love my flock. But here's what I want to do. Today, I want us to encounter God before the prodigal dawns the horizon of the hill. Before the shepherd brings the wanderer back in next week, I want us to be prepared. And I don't believe that's just, although it will be next week. It's not just being here. It's not just setting up the outside, getting parking lot and kids and all the volunteer roles, making sure everything's ready to go. No, no, no. We need to prepare you. You need to be prepared. You need to be prepared in your heart. You need to be prepared spiritually. You need an encounter with God so that God can correct he can filter, he can cleanse, he can heal, he can remind, he can, he can take that soil and replace it with fresh soil. And that's what we need. And so that's what we're going to do. So we intentionally moved our worship songs to the back end of the service because I said, I want this church to really encounter God. We have a heavenly father that ran to the son. That's the spirit of God that's going to run after people next week. And I want to make sure that not only are you here next week, but you are here ready to love, smile, and worship the, the, just the roof off this place so that we can have a spirit of celebration and a spirit, a spirit of joy. And that when people come in here that have been gone, they're like, man, all these folks is in here and they all nice to me. And I'm hearing this message that God, he wants me here. I, listen, can I tell you something? I cannot create that environment for these people by myself. This worship team cannot do that, okay? The couple people in the room that are gonna decide, okay, God, I'm here to create a spiritual environment. We can't do that by ourselves. It is the job of every believer who believes in Jesus. When you're in church, yes, you come for you, but it's never just about you. It's never about you being faithful in the fields. It's about you being a part of the 99. Why? To prepare for when the one who he has chased after and caught and brought back can be properly celebrated, properly encouraged, and properly grafted back into community of the tribe and the flock. So I'm gonna invite you to stand up to your feet. And I want us to encounter the presence of God today, okay? So I want us to go after God. I want you to be able to like say, God, would you just filter my heart? What's out of alignment with me? What's running around in my heart that is not you? And I ask you to filter that right now. I'm gonna ask you to just even close your eyes right now and whatever worship looks like to you, maybe it looks like you just saying, God, I open my heart. I'm gonna lower the drawbridge of my heart to you right now and invite God to come in and say, God, would you filter out whatever's uh, impure in my heart, whatever is uh, still angry in my heart, whatever's resistant to you in my heart, whatever is not you, would you cleanse that right now? Would you purify that right now, God? We want to encounter the living God. He is a good God and his greatness and his goodness came for you once upon a time and he's going to come for some folks this next week and we want to be used by God to do that today. God, move in our midst today. God, we ask that you would pour into this church, build into this church, God. We need the next 10 minutes to matter for us so we could be sent into the fields with the right heart of the Father. We could be sent into the wilderness where the ones are wandering and we could pray for them, reach out to them, invite them, connect with them. But God, for that, we need you. We need you. We need you. We need you right now, God. We need you right now, God. God, we put aside anything else besides you. You are the point. The Father connection is what you said to us matter to you. Not the things, not the results, not the change you do, 
food, not, not the material possessions, not the genie God, but you said you're always with me. That means being with you is what matters. And right now we want to be with you. We want to be with you today, God. We want to be with you today, God. I thank you, God. I thank you, God. Thank you for your faithfulness, God. Pour into this place right now today. Thanks for joining us. If you would like to help us impact more people around the world, we would love your support. You can give through the app or online at OurCity.Church. And be sure to select the Our City Online tab, which helps us know you're listening. If you enjoyed the podcast, you can subscribe, share it with your friends, click the share button, or take a screenshot and share it on your social media and tag us at OurCity.Church. Thanks again for listening. God bless.